I think me everyone can hear me. So I'm speaking to you as a patient, but also someone who's been on the other side um, at board level, listening to our clinicians talk about uh, quality care. Um, so I'd just like to introduce the Real Light Me team. Uh, for the hat day, I'm a found, the founder of this idea, but also a patient. Curti Sharma did our UX design, and Tim Wisniewski, 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 did our software development. Get the names right. Um, thank you. Um, I thought that what I should probably do is teach grandma to suck eggs just so that we understand the confusion that I face. So the World Health Organization defines a rare disease as something that strikes uh, fewer than 65 people per 100,000. Genetic Alliance says that the European Union talks about rare disease impacting uh, less than 5 in 10,000. Because the UK is different, we say that rare diseases impact one in 2,000. Anyone who's a mathematician knows the same thing as five in, in 10, but um, we'll move on. Um, 2021 UK Rare Disease Framework, the NHS said four things they wanted to help patients with. Get our diagnosis faster, increase awareness of rare diseases among healthcare professionals, better coordination of care, improving access to specialist care treatments and drugs. And this was underpinned by five priorities, which largely speak to um, quality, patient voice, uh, collaboration, pioneering research, and data. Um, so what's the problem? As a patient, I don't know what I don't know. A rare disease is maybe genetic, or in my case, like cystic fibrosis, or in my case, sarcoidosis, which is, I don't know what I don't know. I'm not someone who's usually sick, I've not been to hospital, I only go to my GP, as I used to say, for blood, pus, or broken bones. So to suddenly find that I may be dealing with something for the rest of my life, I don't know what I don't know. It's unfamiliar, it's confusing, and if you are moving on from a young person who's got a genetic condition that your parents are tracking it, to becoming an adult, taking over um, that tracking may be an issue. Um, there's a sense of isolation. You don't have the number of people, so it's not as if it's the flu or mumps. And also, if we are supposed to be tracking it, how are we going to do it in a consistent way? What's the clinician's problem? And I've heard this from many clinicians. A neurosurgeon at today's, at yesterday's hat day said, I need a way to see a calendar of all of the daily symptoms. So the idea of patients tracking things regularly, um, one of the Moorfields ophthalmologists said, I only hear about the bad days. So I don't often hear about everything. And for clinicians at three of the hospitals where I was at, I saw so many different people and they're telling the story time and time again. So the idea of getting the information consistently and comprehensively is an issue. Um, next slide. So for patients, what's the solution? We, Real Like Me is an app that will help us regularly track and record our clinical symptoms, contribute to a global community because it will be open to everybody with the rare condition, irrespective of the definition of what a rare condition, um, whether um, your condition is a rare condition. It will address things of isolation and lack of information and support your self-advocacy. Next slide, please. The solution for the clinicians is it's going to be something that will enable the uh, patients to track and record their clinical symptoms, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, they'll be able to request samples and to track compliance when they've gone for the blood test or sent in, for example, a sputum sample. And more importantly, they'll be able to get a printed summary to support them getting up to speed. So instead of hearing the story, they can get a printed summary of all this information. Next slide. So, as we said, who's our avatar? There's the person who's had a genetic condition who's taking it over from their parents, and then there's the person who was hale and hearty and suddenly had a condition. Let's go through. So there are apps in the market, so it shows as a proof of concept. I'd like to move to the next slide. Um, and the next one, please. So Rare Like Me, easy setup, name, email, you can select your rare condition, there's the GDPR <coughs> issues, go to the next slide, and then the one on the left is your daily dashboard. It shows that you record things that are relevant to your care, you'll get the insights. You can also have appointments. This uh, one will give you an opportunity to just give a sliding answer, if you're looking at tep -toe chest severity, to show the trend. And if you say, for example, have to do a sputum sample, then there's a notification, and when you've done it, you just click on it and say yes. So there are many ways that you can track. The best part of it is that you can also include your um, free form information. And for our next slide, 
you can select which area that you're looking at. And this will be done on a, a mobile next slide. Uh, you can see the list of all of the entries that you've done. And the most powerful thing for you in the, uh, to advocate your care is the final slide. Thank you very much. Right, we any questions for very like me? Panel members? Yeah? Have you, I mean, obviously early stages, but have you thought about the research angle? Because one of the hardest symptoms of rare diseases is there's just not that much information about them. Have you thought about how this could help? Thank you, that's a fantastic question, which is why we've put up the future enhancements, which includes things like the academic health science centres like UCL Partners, where you may have these clusters of people uh, with medicine and also academics. Any other questions? Or like me? Any audience questions? Hello, members? Okay, thank you very much.